Now, it turns out that um, each uh, permutation has associated to it a well-defined notion of sign, positive or negative. Um, and so for this, we need the idea of a transposition. So this is a simple type of permutation, transposition, um, that just interchanges two elements and leaves everything else fixed. So transposition is a permutation which <coughs> interchanges two elements and leaves all others fixed. So this means that we might have something where uh, mj is equal to k, and mk is equal to j, and then mi is equal to i for any i not equal to j or k, right? Okay, so turns out that there's a lemma, important lemma, but just a little silly one, and that is that um, every permutation uh, can be written as a composition of transpositions. Uh, whoops, I, I wrote that wrong. Um, there we go. Um, now the um, this this representation. Let's say this representation. So so this representation or this way of of uh, factoring um, the the permutation into transpositions is not unique. But the parity is always the same. And so by that, I mean that if you're able to, you might be able to write a permutation as a single transposition or as a, a composition of three transpositions or a composition of five transpositions, but never two or four. So, and I'll, I'll show you an example in, in just a sec. Um, but this this uniqueness of parity means that we can define the sign of a uh, permutation uh, let's say sigma is so the sign of sigma is going to be minus one to the t, where t is the um, number of transpositions in any representation of our permutation. And so like I said, um, uh, T might be different depending on your particular representation, but it will um, either be always odd or always even depending on sigma. So this notion of, of sign is, is well defined. So if we look at uh, some example, uh, <clears throat> in, in the permutations on, on three elements, um, if we look back at these ones, we see um, that, uh, for instance, um, 1, 3, 2 is an example of something that has um, sign uh, equal to, uh, whoops, minus 1, uh, because we've just transposed uh, elements two and three. So that's one transposition. 
the other ones that have uh, negative one are if we interchange uh, three and one, then we get three, two, one. And if we interchange uh, one and two, then we get two, uh, one, three. So, so these ones actually, these ones all, these are the, the ones that have, whoops. That, that have sine negative one. And so if we look at um, uh, say three, one, two, so this, this one is not on our list. Um, so it's gonna turn out to be even, but let's, let's consider this. We'll think of it in terms of uh, bijections. So imagine if I have the set one, two, three, and I go to the set one, two, three, and let's see. So um, I want to I want to shuffle or permute the elements one, two, three in order to get three, one, two. So I, I could start by uh, swapping these first. So there's my first transposition, um, and then that would give me um, two, one, three as the output. And then I could interchange the first and last, and so that would put a three up here and a two down here. And then I'd have my three, one, two. So in this one here, I'm expressing three, one, two as uh, the first thing I did is I shuffled, um, uh, I did uh, swapped two and one, so that was two, one, three. And then the next thing that I did was I, um, <coughs> I swap the first and last entries to get where I am. So that's uh, three, two, one. That's the transposition where you swap first and last. Um, I could also have done, let's see, so, or I could take one, two, three, and I could swap the first and last. And then I could swap the first two And then I could swap the last two. And then I could swap the uh, first and last. And I get three, one, two. Um, but you notice that, so, so in this first one here, it took uh, two transpositions. And this other one here, it took four uh, but it's a theorem that you'll never be able to do it in exactly three or exactly five or exactly one. Okay. Um, so then we have uh, what the book calls 1032. And that is uh, that interchanging uh, two entries in a uh, transposition, or sorry, in a permutation, changes the sign. Um, and so the book does a slightly different definition of like what a permutation is and what the sign of a permutation is, uh, which I find rather opaque. Um, I think this is a, sort of a, a more clear way to, to see it. It definitely makes the proof of this one a lot easier because um, if you want to, uh, if you interchange two entries, then that means that you take whatever the sign of your permutation is, and then you do one more transposition. So you add one to the exponent in order to figure out the sign of the resulting thing. And then that's just the same as minus one times t, and then we're done.